Hey guys, it's Sluggy. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my most used tools. I promised this in a previous video, so here it is today. Uh, I'm going to be structuring this video in a certain way. Uh, I have a recording of a painting that I did, and I'm going to be speeding it up in between and maybe even skipping some parts, but then slow it down on certain tools that I want to call out and explain. But first, I'm going to run through my workspace. I made a video on this a while ago, but I can quickly run through it now just to give some context. So I've got my color palette up here. I use this primarily to pick my colors. And then I have my tool presets where I keep my eraser and my brushes. And then, of course, we have the layer palette. And I keep this all on the right side, it never, right side, it never moves. And I'm right-handed, so it feels natural to just have it on the right. Maybe for left-handed people, you'd want it on the other side. And then I've, we've got our tool palette on the left, and everything else I hide and only bring up with keyboard shortcuts if I need it. I, tr I like to try and keep my workspace pretty uncluttered and only the stuff that I need at the time. All right, so let's get to the drawing. So I'm the first thing, the first tool I'm using here is the brush tool. Um, I get to it by clicking on one of the brushes that I have there in my tool presets, but you can also get to it with B in the keyboard. Another thing that I use a lot, of course, is the eraser tool, which again, I also usually pick off my tool presets because I have different brushes for the eraser or pressing E on the keyboard as well. And I just switch between the two tools whenever I need it, pretty easily using E or B while I'm painting. Other than the brush or eraser, the other tool that I use probably the most is the lasso tool, which you can use L to get to. And pretty much you just select an area that you want to move, manipulate, all sorts of stuff. And while you're selecting something, you can hold down Alt to deselect an area, and then you can Control D or Command D to deselect the whole thing. I really recommend getting to know and using this tool a lot because it's seriously one of the biggest advantages of digital art over traditional art, um, as well as the layers palette, which is a luxury in digital art as well. Technically, this next thing is not called a tool, but it's something that I use really often in Photoshop, which is the hue saturation sliders. Uh, I'm going to be using that to change the color of this line art that I just made, just to quickly turn it into green. Um, I, something that I think you should do is click the colorize checkbox if you, to make it easier to control the colors that you're picking. This next part, I'm just filling in the shapes. I'm not really worrying about the colors yet. It's just, I'm just trying to make a silhouette of the flowers and the girl and then the flowers behind her. Those are gonna be on three different layers. All right, so now that I'm happy with the silhouette, I'm gonna click on this checkered box button in the layer panel, and that is the set lock transparency button. And you'll see that you have a little lock on your layer pan on your on that layer. And pretty much what that does is that it locks the pixels of that layer. So when you paint on it, it's not going to go out of the lines. It's going to stay within that silhouette that you made. Something else that you could use is clipping masks. And how you do that is you make a new layer and then you click Alt and click on the little sliver of space between the two layers, which will make it into a clipping mask. And that does the same thing, it's just less destructive because you have another layer on top. So if you're doing something pretty intricate or there's lots of colors and lots of, I don't know, just like if it's a lot more complicated, then maybe you want to go use clipping mask because it is a safer route, um, which you can merge all of that layers later. So now that I'm happy with my base layers and my base colors, I want to duplicate and merge everything. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to select all the layers I want to merge and duplicate. I turn off my background though because it does take everything that's visible. And then I click or I, I hit Command Option Shift E 
on the keyboard and it will just duplicate and merge at the same time. If you want to do it step by step, that's fine. Control or Command J is to duplicate a layer and then Command E or Control E is to merge a layer. Merging is useful because it's a lot easier to make color manipulations like using the hue saturation slider or any other filters that you want to use when everything is in one layer. Um, however, I do duplicate it because I want a backup just in case if for any reason I take it to a direction I don't like, I still have the base layers um, in a group somewhere else. When I'm painting, I'm using the eyedropper tool a lot. And you can get to it while you're in the brush tool. You just press Alt and it will bring up this kind of circular ring that lets you know that you're trying to pick something. Uh, and that's pretty much how I pick up colors. And it's also a good way to make sure your colors stay harmonious. The fact that you're using colors that's already in the painting rather than trying to pick a new color every time. Another huge advantage to digital art, I think, is the transformation tools. Once you have something selected, you can then press Command or Control T to bring up some options of transformation. So I just clicked the warp tool, so which is really, really versatile. I can warp it as much as I want. Another good one is the skew. So if you just do Command T again and click skew, you can skew the edges and really change the perspective of something or the shape of something really easily. I would use all of it. There's scale, there's rotate, there's perspective. I would play with it and just see like what, what you can use with that. Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> um, Oh yeah, so from here, I'm really just painting. I'm just making it, you know, more and more detailed, adding more um, little bits of color that I pick from the flowers and putting in her hair, things like that. Um, and I just use the tools whenever I need it, whenever I feel like it could help me. I really care about an efficiency, so I advocate with using as much tools as possible if it makes you faster. Uh, and so for about two or three minutes, it's really just going to be a time lapse. I'm just going to put music. There is one more tool at the end that I can show you. So stay, stick around for that if you'd like. <laughs> Okay, so if usually I use this tool at the end, which is the color balance slider, 
Um, you can get to it with Control or Command B. And really, it's just to help unify a color scheme. If you feel like at the end that your colors are a little bit too not harmonious enough, this is a really nice tool for that. So you just kind of gives little bits of red or a little bit more magenta or whatever you'd like. Okay, cool. So that's the end of the video. So these are my most used tools and I hope this was helpful. I hope I was able to explain it well enough. Um, but if you have any more questions, please, you know, write it in the comments and I'll do my best to reply. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.